at least that's how I interpreted it. I interpret, interpret it, interpret it. God damn. What's up guys? My name is TJ Sloan, otherwise known as Pyrotest underscore three. And these are TJ's top threes of 2021. Let's go. So what we're gonna do this time is I'm gonna do TJ's top threes, except I have actually written out like reviews for each of the things that have placed in the third, second, or first place. It's been a wild year for music and movies, if you ask me. So that's what actually inspired me to actually do this again. And I'm really excited to be talking about music and movies. Um, and we'll get to video games a little bit later too. So for music guys, to kind of refine the list down a little bit, I'm only looking at albums and EPs or short albums. So starting off with number three, we're talking about When Things Were Good by Zach Greer. This dude went from being someone that I had never heard of to one of my favorite artists, zero to 60, like that. The When Things Were Fine EP is definitely some sad boy shit, which you guys know I'm all about. I absolutely love sad boy shit. So it is right up my alley and I absolutely love it. Every song hits for me. I don't think there's a single track that really didn't do it for me. So that EP is absolutely beautiful to me. There's one particular song on When Things Were Fine called Melatonin. It is the most popular track and rightfully so. It's an amazing track. I can listen to Melatonin on repeat and I can't do that with a lot of songs, but Melatonin is something that I can really listen to over and over again, especially because every time I wanna know a little bit more of the words because it's a song you want to sing along with. Anyways, I'm really curious to see where Zach Greer goes from here. I think he's definitely an up and coming artist and It'll be interesting to see where he goes and what direction he decides to take after this EP. My number two spot for music is Montero by Lil Nas X. I could not leave this one out, man. Lil Nas X's debut album has been anticipated by me for literally years now, and I think many of us have been anticipating it for years. But the thing absolutely slapped my ass. I swear, this dude knew exactly what he was doing every step of the way from all the publicity stunts that he pulled to releasing what tracks he did when he released them, the singles leading up to the album, either him or the team that supports him and their accumul accumulative efforts together to make this happen, chef's kiss. The thing I love about Montero is that he really went so many different directions in the album and I can really appreciate that as an artist myself because it's a risky and a bold move to do so. I took it as Lil Nas X taking the opportunity to show us what he can really do and all the different avenues he can take as an artist if he so chose. I love when artists do that shit. When they're like, yeah, you saw me do this, but I can also do this while doing this with a sprinkle of this. I absolutely love that shit. He does it so fucking well. I will admit, I didn't have Montero on repeat, but the first or second listen that I gave it still blew me out of the water. You know what I mean? Like if an album on the first playthrough with no skips um, has such an effect on you like that, it's gotta wind up in your top three for the year. And it did because Industry Baby alone, Industry Baby alone makes that fucking album, dude. Lil Nas X was already incredible by himself, but then he added Jack Harlow, who I, I wasn't really that much of a fan of beforehand, but then them together, they're just such a good little duo. I fucking love them so much. And uh, yeah, it's a killer track. And so is the rest of the album. The rest of Montero shows Lil Nas X using vocal abilities that really stun me because I really kind of put him in this rap category with a like low voice, you know what I mean? But he uses the album to show that like, I'm a singer, I'm a rapper, and most of all, I'm a storyteller. And that's what was cool, is that he could show that he's capable of so many different things. And that's what I absolutely love about the album. And coming in at my number one spot for music is, and it's an EP, Misery Lake by Black Bear. I would have loved if this were a full album because Black Bear didn't miss on a single fucking track. Not a single fucking track on this entire EP. There's no denying that Black Bear has become one of my favorite artists for good reason. As good as Montero was by Lil Nas X and as deep as When These Things Were Fine by Zach Greer was, Misery Lake was what I had on repeat from the day it released. 
I just kept repeating the album over and over. I wanted to know every word of every song. Uh, the instrumentals were just hitting for me. The vocal parts were amazing, but Blackbird's always done that. And then lyrically, like lyrically, the whole EP just whew, right here. I love At My Worst because it starts off with such a simple piano part and then just fucking goes in, you know what I mean? And if you listen to the song, you'll understand what I'm talking about. At My Worst off Misery Lake by Black Bear. Go listen to it. It's beautiful. Not only was the fact that I had the EP on repeat the reason why I got my number one spot, but also because Black Bear has this ability, which he's done in the past, to do this thing that I love in longer form projects like EPs and like full length albums. Anytime an artist can take an idea or a concept and spread it into an EP or album, right? Without sounding repetitive is what wins me over every time. And that's exactly what Black Bear did. Of course it was an EP, so it wasn't a full length project, which would have been harder for him to do, I'm sure. But even still looking back on like everything means nothing, his last full length album, he did the exact same thing. He took the concept of heartbreak and being sad, but also being a badass somehow at the same time and spread it across an entire album. So when Misery Lake was coming out, I'm like, I wonder what this one's gonna be about. The same fucking shit, except just as good, if not better. Yeah, Black Bear is just always hitting for me. Um, I'm excited to see him actually like topping charts now. That's really cool for him because I've been following since Digital Drug Lord back in what was that 2017 2016 so yeah really happy for black bear and that is all my music guys so let's get into some movies sitting at number three for movies is godzilla versus king kong i absolutely love this movie was it a good movie no what did it make sense nah but it was so fun and childhood tj was just so excited to watch godzilla and king kong duking it out on a big screen oh my gosh i had so much damn fun just watching these two go at it that the rest of the movie didn't even have to make sense and sometimes that's what movies are you know what i mean yeah, I can be critical of movies and I could probably pick the movie apart and I did pick it apart on my second watch through because I was like, yeah, that don't make any sense. This shouldn't be happening. What are they doing over here? But to just sit back and watch a movie where a big lizard and giant monkey are punching each other in the face, good enough, man. Sometimes that's just good enough. Even if it's not necessarily the greatest movie of 2021, it's fun enough that it was worth watching. And so if you haven't seen Godzilla vs. Kong, I highly recommend it. My number two movie, and this one was kind of like an action comedy, was Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. This movie kind of took me by surprise because I didn't have any expectations really going in to see it. I just saw that the movie was like kind of video game related and had Ryan Reynolds in it. So I'm like, eh, it probably won't be too bad. But then it kind of blew me out of the water. It was actually really good, really fun, uh, really funny, and just, kind of well written actually like a little surprisingly well written i was kind of expecting it to be like maybe geared towards kids because like it was it would have video game references and shit like that in it but it actually had more references geared towards i think adults that play video that have been playing video games since they were kids oh the other thing about free guy is that it has a cute it has like a love story in it like it's it's an action movie that's funny but it also like has this underlying little love story that's kind of cute so if you have a soft spot for that sort of thing you might really enjoy it and coming in at number one for movies of 2021 is spider-man no way home this one shouldn't even be a surprise even if you weren't a spider-man fan and you watched spider-man no way home did it make you a fan? Are you a fan now? Cause you should be. It's an absolutely incredible film. It's well written. It's it's uh it's gonna be up for like some awards, I think. I think I saw that on like uh the internet somewhere, maybe Twitter or something. I don't wanna give a lot of spoilers away. If you haven't seen No Way Home by now, please go watch No Way Home. There's so many things in there. There's I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I did a whole like hour and a half, two hour review on a stream of mine on this very YouTube channel uh, just a couple weeks back of No Way Home because there was so many things to talk about and I had my buddy Gabriel on there and we um, we just kind of hashed out everything there was to talk about uh, about um, Spider-Man No Way Home. 
There's so many things. Willem Dafoe is such an incredible actor. Tom Holland is such an incredible actor. There was really nothing bad to say about No Way Home. I feel like I didn't even review Spider-Man No Way Home. I just told you it was incredible. But there's nothing to review without giving it away, you know? Like, there's nothing to... I can't tell you anything. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> just go watch the movie. <laughs> but don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe because I've got a lot of cool things in store for this channel and I'd love to have you along for the ride. And lastly, we have video games. As you can see, I play video games. Not new ones. Not any from 2021. <laughs> um, in 2021, I basically just still played Overwatch. It's a dead game. Overwatch is dead. Quit playing Overwatch. It's dead. It's fun. Me and my friends still play Overwatch. And I'm starting to get back into Destiny 2. Uh, excuse me. I'm starting to get back into Destiny 2. Because Witch Queen's coming out soon. Um, so, yeah. I'm just playing games that I've been playing for years. <laughs> but, uh, over Christmas, I did receive Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I did receive, uh, Pokemon Shining Pearl. So, those will be cool things that I'll be streaming soon, uh, once we finish through our Pokemon Sword playthrough. I started late with Pokemon Sword, so if you're new to the channel, and you're wondering why I'm still playing Pokemon Sword after... What has it been two years since that game has come out? Uh, it's because I started really late and then took a break and then came back to the game. So we're, you know, it's, it's a whole thing. So speaking of that, guys, I try to stream every Monday at about 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're interested in watching a live stream of Pokemon or Spider-Man or maybe some other game, uh, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I go live. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Pyrotaz underscore three. So that way you can stay up to date with when I'm going to be doing stream things and uh, other hijinks in my life. For honorable mentions, as far as music goes, I've got Smackables, the deluxe version by Pretty Much. Um, we've got These Things Happen Too by g Easy, North End Sweetheart by Ryan Caraveo. As far as movies go, we've got Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, the movie Nobody was really good, and Chaos Walking was pretty good. And of course, guys, I would be remiss and stupid if I didn't at least mention that in 2021, I released my debut album, First Impressions. Obviously, I like the album because I made it and I'm really proud of it, but I'm not going to put it in my top three, mostly because it didn't deserve a spot compared to the other um, albums or EPs that had made those top three. But I did figure it was an honorable mention because um, I still listened to it a lot last year, and I'm really excited to be getting new music out to you guys here shortly. So feel free to follow my other channel, which is TJ Sloan Sings, um, which contains all my music videos and some different music stuff that's going on over there. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hella appreciate you. Like I said, I've got fun things coming to this channel, so please stick around and subscribe. I'll catch you next time, and uh, see you later.